It's not for the faint of heart. There are three things that will get you in trouble. Cold, dark, and deep. And Lake Erie is the one place where you'll find all three on virtually every dive. I think you have to be a little bit daring and foolish because you go down and you can't see, you can't see, you can't see. And that's kind of spooky. When I go down in dark water, my head starts going, oh, this is scary, until you actually can see the wreck. And as soon as you see the wreck open up in front of you, whatever claustrophobia you may have just disappears. And when you dive down on the wreck, it's kind of like, well, why, what happened to it? Why did it sink? What, you know, what, what was leading up to the circumstances as to why it got here? And you're saying, hey, I may be the first person that's been here in 100 years. You find that first shipwreck and you're touching it. And whether you're the first person there or not doesn't matter. You, you've climbed that mountain, so it's rather exhilarating. You're completely cocooned in technology and uh, completely dependent on it in a hostile environment. Plus you're weightless. Um, everything looks strange. Shipwreck dive, I think, in 1990. And it was on uh, a shipwreck called the Dundee. And the viz was really bad that day. All I can see was a board. It was sort of a braille dive where you just can't see anything more than a few inches ahead of you. But I still really enjoyed it. And I thought, I have to try this again. You know, our visibility ranges from zero at the west end to off of Erie, Pennsylvania, and further east. You can sometimes see 100 foot or more. There's an interesting story behind every boat that sinks. I've had a lot of my friends say that, well, it looked like bile boards on the bottom. Well, yeah, it is. That's all it is, unless you know the story, unless you can appreciate the traumatic event that put that shipwreck on the bottom. Not everybody has their own personal shipwreck, but unfortunately, I had mine. We left the yacht at Battery Park Marina uh, middle of the afternoon on October 10th. We ran um, all that afternoon through the night um, and into the next morning. And it was beautiful weather. We had a beautiful sunset. Lake was calm. I woke up um, about 4.30 in the morning and I came topside where John Fresh and uh, my friend Chuck Quickendale were making their way across Lake Erie. And at that point, it, Lake Erie had gotten pretty snotty. They were both tired. So I said to John, I said, do you want me to take the wheel? And he said, yeah. I ran to about uh, 6.30 in the morning. And at that point, Chuck Quickendale woke up. Uh, about uh, 10 minutes later, um, John Fresh was waking up. And Chuck said to me, he said, what's that noise? I don't really remember hearing it, but John had woke up and he said, well, that's a wave slap, okay? And about five minutes later, I looked down and I noticed the, uh, the heat gauge and the voltage gauge had went to zero. And I said, John, we got a problem. I said, we've lost two gauges. And he went back to the stern, went down below into the engine room, and he came back about two minutes later and he grabbed the radio and he hailed Mayday. I thought he was kidding until I looked at his eyes and I saw these great big saucer eyeballs. And I thought, oh, <laughs> he's not kidding. I was at the wheel when all hell broke loose. Within two minutes, I could hear the big diesel engine start sucking water. And I thought, oh no. So I back the throttle down and shut it off because I didn't want to ruin the engine. And I thought, we've got a big problem, but I think we're going to make, we're going to make harbor. And as soon as that happened, 
you could feel the rear of the stern of the ship just squat. And I thought, oh God. But I noticed now my legs are getting wet, now my knees are wet, now my thighs are wet. As the boat started to heel, heel over, the three of us are huddled on the bow. At one point, you're watching the, the, the stern of the vessel go down, and the wheelhouse is all lit up underwater. It was beautiful. And in my weird psychic, it was an out-of-body experience. I'm hearing this darn music from the Titanic. The wheelhouse, all of a sudden, it went dark. Well, that's when that wheelhouse, or parts of it, popped free. The bow of the ship was rising up, started to turn over, and it's just breaking daylight. Chuck was hanging on to the, to the rail. Well, he slipped off and he fell in the water. John Fresh, the owner, jumped onto the floating wreckage of the wheelhouse and he busted off the non-working GPS antenna and he reached it out to Chuck and I said, Chuck, Chuck, turn around. And Chuck turned around and John put that in his hand and pulled him, pu pulled him up on the wheelhouse roof. So here you got those two guys floating away on a piece of wreckage and you got me all by myself. And I thought, there's Coast Guard's gonna have to make two res rescues if I don't swim to them. We were in the water probably about uh, 45 minutes. Here comes Coast Guard Cutter, and it's going like gangbusters due north. And I thought, man, they're in a heck of a hurry to save somebody out there. What made it significant for me was how fast this happened. This great big ship went down from under my feet in eight minutes. Years later, George Ann Walker called me. She said, you know, Mike and I are here in Kania with our boat and we'd like to dive the Carol Sue too. And we were wondering whether you want to go diver. And I thought about it, I said, you know, I probably should. I went down and I was very apprehensive until the ship came into view. And then I just totally relaxed. It was beautiful. It, it was beautiful when it was sinking. Well, here I am again, years later, going down, and she comes into view. And I thought, I thought she was gorgeous. I was delighted that I was able to do it. It gave a happy ending to a bad experience.